to Basic Ring Video. I'm James Spencer. I'm Steve Wilkes. This is the Steve Wilkes <laughs> show today. This is Steve's experiment. Uh, usually yeah. it's just me talking I'm about take uh, what lead. I'm brewing, but uh, but it's your it's, turn. It's so rare. It's so rare. <laughs> well, you know, James, you turned into Max Headroom there for a second. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, you, I, 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 you know, I <laughs> uh, I guess what about uh, actually too long ago now for my little experiment, but we're, we're going to do it anyway. Um, I was bottling up my Canyon Road Munich Dunkel, so I was I was bottling this beer. And it, it is a kit that I happen to sell, so I brewed the all-grain version of it just to have it here in the shop and be able to give samples out and drink some myself. And, and since I was bottle conditioning, I got to thinking about um, how it would carbonate in the bottle mm -hmm. because I had lagered this thing for way longer than I meant to. I, I don't even remember when I started the beer. I think I started it sometime in February. Oh, wow. And I... Yeah, I mean, a long time ago. So I, I brewed it, and then um, as we have talked about, I, I got kind of got sick, and I and I just I lagered it. I stuck it in the lager chamber, and there it sat until I kind of got better. And so once I got around to it, I thought, boy, I think I need to add some bottle conditioning yeast to this because the yeast had dropped out. In my opinion, I didn't know this, but did the yeast drop out to the point that it would be difficult to get it to bottle condition. And this is a big so, beer too, right? Yeah, well, no, it's not terribly, it's not all that big. It's just 5%. Oh, okay. But, I thought this was bigger. But, um, but it would, for, for the sake of the show, one of the reasons that you would want to bottle condition and add fresh yeast would be if it were a big beer regardless. So as I was bottling, I took a six-pack and I bottled that without adding any uh, uh, bottle conditioning yeast. And then, then I, so I bottled that six pack and then I added my yeast at uh, the proper amount and then bottled them up. And so the idea that was that we were going to take a look at, you know, comparing the two different uh, beers, one with bottle conditioning yeast, one without, and see if there was any difference. Now, really, for that to have been really effective, we should have done it within the first week or two, right. and we didn't. But that's okay because it's still a viable test to see if there's any difference in flavor, to see if there's any difference in the head. Um, it has been about three weeks now, I think, um, since, I, since I bottled the beer up. But um, at did, any rate... Did you taste any of, the, any, any of both of them, or did, are you, have you just been tasting the uh, ones with the yeast at it? No, I, I've, I've had both, and I've tasted both, um, and... There was a difference, hmm. and now I'm curious, but I haven't tasted both in, in a couple of weeks. So I'm curious now to see if there is a difference, if you can tell a difference between the two. There's, no, there's nothing blind about them. We just have, I mean, you know which is which, and so do I. Right. But to see if we can tell, if we can pick up any difference, and then just to talk a little bit about bottle conditioning and why you would do it and why you wouldn't do it. So I thought it would be kind of a fun thing to do. Now, we usually talk about the brewing process, uh, but we're going to concentrate on the experiment this time. If you want the recipe, go to uh, stevesbrewshop.com yeah. and look yeah, and for, look what's, the name, what's the name of the recipe again? The, it's uh, Canyon Road Munich Dunkel. Okay. And it, it is a, uh, I, I never call things clones because I don't think you can, you can't exactly clone uh, a beer. I don't care. Right. People say you can, but you can't. Right. Uh, but I, it's brewed in the tradition of Negro Modelo. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. So, uh, anyway, it's a beer to be savored just like, uh, just like a Negro Modelo, which is one of my really great beers. It's a great beer. And this is very similar to it. So, uh, so you can find the recipe. You can also find the kit. Uh, and there's like a, a add to cart button near that. So if you, <laughs> yeah. if you yeah. just happen to want to go <laughs> and you've got, well, I mean, if, you know, if you're interested in it, you can download the recipe and you can either, you, you can get the ingredients from me or you can go to your own local homebrew shop. If you've got one handy, right. that's fine. Uh, you know, and, uh, give it a whirl. Um, it's good beer and uh, at least, at least I like it. Um, <laughs> so there so, you go. So which <laughs> one should I taste first? Well, I guess taste the one without the uh, secret code on it. This is the secret code for 
This is the one that has the bottle conditioning now, yeast. Now I've got an so, X and I've got a uh, nothing, and it yeah, says do the, the nothing. The the X says no conditioning yeast, and the blank says with conditioning yeast. Yeah. So blank is blank is uh, with is conditioned. Okay. So which one should I do first? <laughs> uh, let me back that up. So I had it backwards in my mind. I'd forgotten. <laughs> Thank let's goodness do, for the let's do note. the. Uh, <laughs> you got the key. I forgot the key. <laughs> well, I've got a brand new pair of roller skates. Yeah, and I've got a brand new key. Um, let's do this one first. Okay, I'll do the X with a no the conditioning X. yeast. No okay. conditioning. All right. So, drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. So, how long has this been in the bo uh, in the bottle? About about four weeks now. Okay. Altogether. Well, despite the despite the lagering, uh, and the what and what yeast did oh, yeah. you what yeast did you use? I used Imperial Que, que Bueno. Oh, okay. So, um, wow, which of course isn't available anymore. If I were going to brew this today, I would use um, Imperial Harvest, or I'd use Fermentis Thirty Four Seventy. That would be my choices. Oh, wow. That's really good. I've been I've been seeing pictures of you drinking that, or you've been posting pictures on social media of this beer, and I've been and I've had these. I have I've got two sets of these, and I've been like, well, oh, maybe I could, do it. but I've been holding off. <laughs> <laughs> this is way good, way good. Yeah, it's a good beer. I I really enjoy it, and I've been drinking one every three or four days. Mm. Super clean on the palate. Uh, there's a. <clears throat> It's not as chocolatey as like a porter, um, right. but there is, but there are chocolate notes in there. Yeah, um, it's rich without being cloying. Oh man, super good, really, Thanks. really good. Yeah, it's mostly, um, you know, a five gallon batch, just ten pounds of Munich, twelve ounces of Vienna, six ounces of chocolate malt, and four ounces of melanoidin malt, and then mm. I just used uh, two ounces. Of Hallettauer, one ounce of Hallettauer Tradition, and one ounce of Hallettauer Middle Fruit, and then the Que Bueno yeast. That's it. And and this and that one was not bottle conditioned, and you could tell it had a great head. Yeah, no con fine. no conditioning yeast. It's just the yeast that was still in suspension. Right. Uh, and now this one did have some conditioning yeast. And I I think I might have poured them differently. I'm not sure. That one's also beautiful. Hmm. Also delicious. I wonder, I wonder if that conditioning yeast knocked off a little bit of the, of the gravity. Because I, I think this too. one has a little more mouthfeel, and maybe I'm just talking myself into it, but I'm thinking that this one, the first one without the conditioning yeast, has a little more mouthfeel than the second one. I agree. The one that, that I didn't use the bottling condition, that I, the one that I did not uh, use the yeast on, I'm getting tongue-tied today, I think has a little, a little more viscosity, and it, and it feels just ever so slightly richer. Mm-hmm. The one that I used the conditioning yeast on feels just a little bit thinner. Yeah, I agree. And uh, now it, it might be that, it, I mean, I, I, I think that's true. I, 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 think, I don't think that our palates are fooling us because we're both getting the same exact uh, sensory on this. Could it be? <laughs> I'm, turn, I'm turning to Mr. Ziffel. <laughs> hey, Doris. <laughs> Mr. Douglas, your wife got any more of those hot cakes? I need to put them on the roof. <laughs> I got a hole. <laughs> oh, boy, hot cakes. Me and my wife, Doris, and my son, Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> Is, could it be that there's a little more carbonation in, this, in the second one? Yeah, I think it's a little more carbonated. It seems like it's a little crisper. Um, 
It, it, the mouthfeel is a little less rich, and I, th- and I think the head's a little less creamy. Huh. They're both good. So they're both good. I'm not, and, and I wouldn't, uh, if you hadn't drank the first one, you wouldn't even think about it. Right. You know, but, uh, but I think there is a difference, and in this case, I think the one that I didn't use the yeast on is a little bit better beer. Now, did, and, did, and that's surprising to me. Was there a difference in the rate that they that they carbonated? Did you? I mean, I didn't think so, because, and that's what I was really trying to fit, trying to take a look at. Was I had a beer that had lagered for uh, two to to three months, really. I I I just got to where I was lost as far as how long it had been in the refrigerator, and so once I got uh, the energy up to take care of the beer, I thought, oh my lord, this thing's been setting and. 35 degrees now for, you know, three months. There might not be any yeast available for this thing to chew on. Excuse me. So um, I went ahead and I actually used real uh, conditioning yeast that's sold by uh, uh, Lalamond. Hmm. And it's called, uh, I think it's CBC1. Um, I sell the yeast and and I have a number of customers that use it. And I've used it before this. I've I've certainly done it in the past. Um, But you... You use uh, so many grains or so many uh, grams per liter. I think it's one gram per liter. Mm. Uh, you have to do a little bit of math um, when you use it. And in a five-gallon batch, there's, there's way more than you need in, a, in, a, in an 11-gram pouch. Uh, so you don't want to overpitch it. You don't want to just dump a whole thing in your five-gallon batch. But, so you want to do, do it right, which I did. And... Um, it turns out in in this batch, at least in this five percent beer, I really didn't need to do that. Yeah. But I'm really anxious, or I'm looking forward to having a beer, say Russian Imperial Stout, or a, you know a really big beer where I know that that yeast is is stressed. I know that, I, you know, it's it would be helpful to get some fresh yeast in there. I think on this particular beer, even though it's set and lagered, um, next time I do something like this and it goes a long time in the lagering bin. I'm not going to worry about it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that's kind of a, for what it's worth, lesson uh, that I wasn't too sure about. No. But uh, both beers are good. I, we're really splitting hairs on the flavor, but I would agree with you that the one that we did not, or I didn't um, add the yeast to, I think is a just slightly better beer. Mm-hmm. In this case, yeah. Yeah. Good so, experiment. Woohoo! Yep. <laughs> you know, that's, Learn a little something. I mean, I certainly learned something. And I, uh, you know, it's not really the result I expected. I expected to go, oh, it was such a good idea to do that. It turns out it didn't, it didn't make any difference in terms of the carbonation level, which is what I was concerned about. Uh, but it did make a difference in that the bottle conditioning yeast was a little more aggressive than the yeast I used in the first place. And so it ate a few more of those sugars out. Mm-hmm. And made the beer a little bit thinner. Yeah. So, yeah. There you go. All e- right. Excellent On experiment. That happy thank, note. You, thank you, Steve. Thank you, James. So there you go. More beer knowledge for you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Free and worth every penny. <laughs> happy brewing, everybody. <laughs> happy brewing. Come and visit us online. At basicbrewing.com, you can find archive lists of our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs and our Brewer's Logbook, where you can track and log up to 50 batches of beer. If you're in Fayetteville, Arkansas, stop by Steve's Brew Shop or find him online at stevesbrewshop.com. Oh, that's good. Isn't that good beer? So good. Yeah. I've had a couple people call me that have ordered it, and I send them the kit, and then they, they call me and just... Like in tears, weeping how good it is. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they're just like, oh my God.